PAX is the perfect time to find all the cool small gems. And with the switch on the prowl, I went hunting for my own favorite Nindies. And today we're going to talk about what I played day one at PAX East. And it is a pretty cool list of games, Gabe. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. If anybody oh. understands that reference, let me know in the comments below. A lot of these uh, were featured in recent indies, uh, recent Nintendo pieces. So let's start with the cream of the crop. Let us know in the comments ah. down below which of these games <laughs> sounds the most exciting to you. Please, in the comments down below, hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. It really does help us out a lot, and we super appreciate it. I super appreciated that I saw Atomicrops first. This was a game I was super excited for. It looked absolutely chaotic and crazy. It combines a lot of your favorite things, Gabe. Farming. Mm -hmm. Love getting it. married roguelike elements god you're naming everything i love <laughs> so many things that are so important to you and it's safe to say that this is a winner it is hectic as heck it is so chaotic because you are trying to okay you're trying to do so much i imagine this is what having a real job is like you have to go and get the seeds then you have to you know, like till your, your little field, then you have to plant the seeds, then you have to water the seeds, then you have to fertilize the seeds, then you have to harvest the veggies. All the while, you're being attacked by like nuclear animals and creatures and shooting them back, utilizing different weapons and different upgrades to try and protect your farm while growing your farm, while going out and exploring to find new upgrades, new powers, like maybe a giant rain cloud that helps water everything at once. It is incredibly intense, but it has that really great little morsel that makes you want to get better and better and play more and more because the hands on the controller gameplay experience is great. Like the shooting feels great. The movement feels, feels great. It's all snappy. So much is happening. So much color. It was like a really nice breath of fresh air when I got picked up by the helicopter to go back to town. And honestly, when the helicopter picked me up, I didn't know if I was gonna have to fight this helicopter or if it was taking me to safety. But once it does, you go back to a village and there you can buy new gear, you can talk. Eventually you'll find someone to marry and apparently bring out into the field with you. Um, the only thing I'd say that like was a little like hmm on their, their part is that the cycle, and I don't know if it gets longer or if it's different depending on whatnot, but the day-night cycle of when you are exploring and uh, tending your farm versus defending because there's just so much going on. Creatures are constantly coming at you, but at night they really come at you. And that period of time felt pretty short. Like it went from day to night real quick. Yeah, the freaks do come out at night, Zach. I, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. But yes, this game instantly caught our attention when we saw it uh, during a Nintendo like highlight of indie games that was coming up. You know, Nindy's big, big part of the platform. And, you know, this one's post-apocalyptic nature and like super charming visuals, like really like grabbed us right away. And I'm glad to hear that you played it and thought it was fun. Did you get to marry anyone? I did not get to marry anyone uh, yet. What a failure. All right. I tried really hard. I thought I, I harvested some Stuck good potatoes. Try really hard. Yeah, I, I do. But no, like this is definitely one to like mark off. Like you need to watch out for this. It was really good. I was so sad that I could not take it home. It's it's a great sign where I'm like, I don't want to leave the booth. And no word booth. right about release date. No word as of yet about release date, but it is going to be a, a perfect fit on Switch. I played it on, I believe it was a PC or an Xbox build, um, but it, it's, it's fantastic. It's going to be fantastic on Switch. I'm, awesome. I'm already in love. All right, let's move on to Castle Crashers Remastered, which is Castle Crashers Remastered. It, it looks pretty darn good on the Switch, and it is... I played it solo, game. So okay. Castle Crashers is not really a solo-type experience. I think if you like Castle Crashers, you will like Remastered. I think if you like the idea of Castle Crashers but haven't played it, you'll like Remastered. But I think as a solo experience... It's not a must-buy for someone that's already beaten the game and knows it's more fun uh, with, you know, one, two, three other friends. Yeah, especially you've already, like, played it on multiple platforms, not only when it came out originally on XBLA back in the day. I, I mean, I would still like to check it out, probably, just because, you know, Castle Crashers was a fun game, and I used to really, really like what the, what the Behemoth you know, used to do, and, and you know, maybe the fifth game that they have coming up uh, will bring us back a little bit more of, of that really fun style because the last couple games they put out have been misses, at least for me. So yeah, yeah I don't know. I kind of want to support it. I mean, we'll see. Did you see like any like visual differences that like really like 
No, I thought it looked really good. I mean, it's, it's very simple art style. It looked very clean, very crisp. I mean, it, it's a blast from the past to see that that booth. You got Castle Crashers being featured prominently. They're you know they're still doing pit people and, and all that. Um, they still have the you know the merch that I feel like I've seen. It, it, it changes up, but like they're just like such a fixture of packs that have been there with seemingly a lot of the same lineup for years and years. But no, it's at least hey, it ran well. It looked good, and you're not gonna have any like issue or. or problem if that is what you want to play and that's where you want to play. I think it's great that it's coming to the platform and I'm hopeful that the, uh, you know, the price and the release date are friendly and we get our hands on it soon. Okay. All right, Gabe, let's move to one that I think you're really going to be fond of. I, I, Atomicrops is amazing. I just want to say one more time that like it's so satisfying when a game you're really excited for that has an obscure concept turns out to be really awesome and that was Atomicrops, but that's also Creature in the Well. This is... Zelda meets pinball, kind of like some <laughs> like hyper light drifter type elements, but the thing that caught me right away is the artistic style and the way the camera moves and the perspectives kind of change is really striking. You instantly feel like you are embarking on a very important quest in a very magical world, and they just do some great stuff with, with panning the camera and with the creature kind of peering out from from underneath at you and these dungeons slash ruins that you're, you're traversing through it all just has a very like familiar but also unique style if you look at the the video footage like it i don't i don't want to call it like line art because it's obviously much more than that but they have very aggressive lines that i think help distinguish this game from everything else they could have easily gone just like a traditional pixel art and it still would have been fun but I love that they do have their own little look here. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely unique. I have never really seen too many games that look like this, especially not with pinball elements. It seems like pinball, man, making a resurgence of some kind. First, we get a Metroidvania um, <laughs> pinball game with Yoku's Island, and uh, now we're getting a Zelda-like pinball game with, with Creature and the Well, and anything Zelda-like, Zach, you know I'm there for it. Pinball is a bit weird here. Um, the combat is like, there's balls, you know, queued up, and you go and hit them, um, against different like bumpers and targets and that will help you generate power and you'll use that power to power up different devices and doors and progress through the game so you're trying to acquire this power via hitting different pinball elements of the balls but you'll also use it to fight uh different enemies aka machines it's much more a, a, a game about entering a room and there's an arena set up of different obstacles and you need to find the i guess quickest and most pinball -y way to take everything out or to accomplish your goal there as far as i saw there weren't a whole lot of like roaming enemies or scenarios where oh you're you know shooting this pinball out at enemies it's more like the room is set up and then you have to come and do your best now it did get much more chaotic as i progressed through the demo eventually facing off against the creature or at least some form of the creature that was very hectic and that's when i like the game the most i will say it's a bit like kind of scatter shot and maybe that's the intention of you're you're swinging your sword uh you're knocking the pinballs around you, you might be hitting a bunch of them you're dodging out of the way of different lasers that are coming at you it's i think less about precision and more about just keeping pace um with the the frenetic play that's taking shape and and that was interesting for me um but very very cool and i love that they were able to take a unique concept and do something cool with it. It does feel distinct, and I, I guess, like, I, I don't know how the variety will shape up over the course of the game, but I hope they are able to bring in enough creativity with the pinball mechanic, uh, and maybe even some different weapons or different styles of how to use the balls. Right now, it was just, like, hit the ball traditionally, or you can kind of, like, almost, like, charge up the ball with a bunch of, like, quick hits, and then shoot it out at, like, a higher rate. Like, you charge up more power, and then it'll deal more damage to the bumpers, uh, and then generate more power. Um, but I, I hope there's more elements just to keep it feeling as fresh as it did at the start. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it because, you know, th this is one of the games that could potentially just look really cool and then just, like, it doesn't feel good to play. But I am glad that, that you seemingly are giving it a thumbs up based on an early yeah. look, and uh, I'm going to be looking forward to this one coming out. It's a big buy for me as soon as the release date gets announced. Next up, I play Rad, which I was really excited for because it's double fine. I love a lot that they've done. I'm super excited for Psychonauts 2, the eventual sequel to one of my favorite games of all time, one of the most creative games I think I've ever played. Rad was featured at the recent Nindies. I thought it looked kind of rad. I'm sad to say it didn't feel very rad. 
<laughs> it's it's a bummer to describe because it I don't know, you know, demos are interesting. A lot of times, especially with games that have different ideas, it's hard to grasp everything in one 10 minute chunk, right? It, it's really hard to just sit down. You know, if it's something like Mario or it's like the next Call of Duty, like, yeah, we've played so many of those, we know exactly what to do. But with a game that doesn't have maybe as direct of a concept or like the, the progression doesn't seem as apparent, it's a little hard. And that's another reason that Atomicrops was so impressive because it didn't have everything right off the bat. You didn't have any tutorial, and yet it was still fun, even though I was kind of clueless. Yeah, Rad. I, mean, I was going to yeah. ask you something super quickly, just because I'm very curious. Like, are the transformations cool and unique, at least? Well, that was the biggest bummer of all, and I don't know if there's other ways to acquire them, but I only got one transformation during my probably 15-minute play session, and it was acquired via what seemed like an XP meter. And, and again, I could be missing some things, but I got one transformation, and I don't know if it was randomized or if it was just set for the demo, but it was the one where you poop out little, like, alien insect babies. So it didn't really modify my character in any great way. It more just, like, added little helpers. And you're kind of going around this world that's, like, floating islands, and you're trying to access this... You're gathering these two, like, uh, big totems and then accessing this, like, underground layer where there's a boss. It just felt very, very standard um, and very... I hate to say it, but it felt like a, a PC experience that I would have played two decades ago. And, I mean, in some ways, they are going for a rad, you know, 80s style or whatnot. But it did not feel very rad to me. I don't know. I, I guess TBD on this one because there has to be more to the game and there has to be more to the structure and what you're going for. I just did not find it all that appealing or engaging in this demo. Yeah, I mean, I, I never was, like, blown away by the trailer or anything. I didn't, like, think that stylistically, like, it was going to be for me. But, yeah, I, I mean, we, like you said, we'll wait and see on this one. The last game of the day is Moving Out, which was something I was very eager to check out because I love Overcooked and Overcooked 2. And this game seems to take cues from that and bring it to the moving company genre. If you ever wanted to be a mover and do things in a quirky, quick, and very destructive way, Moving out is pretty neat. You are going around and gathering all of the items that need to be moved with a timer, taking them all to the truck, and trying to shove everything in, achieving a one, two, or three star rating. So as you can see, it's it's similar to Overcooked. It's, it's co-op. There is that sort of like bicker boys type approach where like, hey, you need to go over here. Hey, we're trying to pull this together. Hey, you got to move out of the way so I can get through this door. Hey, we got to squeeze it through the window here. Just throw the chair. Oh my gosh, like it's dumping out of the truck. There, there are those elements and there is a very cool and I'd say easygoing art style that's reminiscent of Overcooked. Um, we got to play a couple different levels. One that was very simple, just in a neighborhood, all the way up to a haunted house where ghosts were trying to ruin your day, chairs were possessed and leaving the truck. And um, there was a little bit of, of that charming chaos that overcooked has given us time and time again okay it all i was go gonna ahead. ask you though like is it is it still like score based the way that that overcooked is like can you still like see this is this is where i started to get a little concerned because the, the levels i played the goal was to get x number of pieces moved out of the house or the mansion into the truck but it's preset. It's like, oh, there's 16 things you need to go get them. Oh, there's 20 things you need to go get them. Some of the most enjoyable fun of Overcooked is how nuanced it is that you can screw up a recipe, that you can screw up but then recover, that you can build up a combo meter. And I didn't really see anything at that depth. I don't really even know how you may fail. I guess like once you start getting into levels that do have obstacles or enemies, it could get a little more difficult. But there aren't, as far as I'm aware, enough different criteria to make this anywhere near as engaging as overcooked because you just put the stuff in the truck and if it falls out you just shove it back in and at least in the demo i had plenty of time to acquire the items and move them out into the truck and i never felt rushed because it's very straightforward could it be that maybe like one or two things it's like very early stages or maybe they just like simplified it for packs because they didn't want like people failing. I, I really hope that that's something that, that was happening just because like, look, who would have thought that a game about like being a chef and like cooking like could have been like that fun and like not competitive because it's a cooperative game, but still like sort of like competitive. Uh, 
moving is another thing that like Zach, like I've moved just like you've moved a bunch of times. I, I don't know if you move your own, your your own stuff the way I do, but when I move with my brother, I'm always yelling at him like, "No, like move it this way." Like like Damn. so. I, I mean, I feel like that could translate very well to like a fun game. I, I really thought so as well, and I hope that there's still more underneath the hood with this one. Um, it just it seems a little too simple. It it seems like they were heavily inspired by Overcooked and wanted to apply it to a different genre and maybe a a job or a genre that doesn't have enough detail to elicit the same overwhelming response that Overcooked has. Again, I think with a game like this, failing is some of the most fun, and thus far I did not see a lot of ways for you to fail, but I would still keep your eyes on this. I think out of the list today, Castle Crash is a known commodity, so I'm going to kind of just set that one aside, but Atomicrops is the one to really watch out for, but Creature in the Well is right on its heels. I would say Rad, as of right now, is a pass for me, Verdict is still out on moving out. I still need to see more on that game because the, the framework is there. They just need to nail a few more of the specifics. And I, I guess I just did not see enough in the demo to know if it's going to be a winner uh, or just another me too. I mean, regardless, it's cool that you got to have a look and, and you know, personally play a lot of these games that we've seen in, you know, Nintendo presentations of one kind or another. And yeah, I mean, now now we have some type of gauge what, what to be more excited for. Uh, again, you mentioned uh, Atomicrops being like the one to look out for. That That's always been the one to look out for for me. So I'm mm -hmm. happy that, that that is staying this way for now. Yeah, PAX East has been awesome so far. I still have plenty more to check out. I'm really hunting for as many awesome Switch experiences uh, as I can possibly find. Games like my friend Pedro, Super Meat Boy Forever, Warsaw, Super KO Crush still out there lurking. I am going to go play them. And we'll be back with more in the meantime. Let us know what you think of these games now that you've seen new footage and heard our impressions in the comments down below. Make sure that like button if you enjoyed the video and are pumped for these coming ninnies. And until next time, for myself and Gabe, thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Switch Force, out.